a boxer, oftentimes you are remembered by your defeats more than your victories, and for George Chevallo, that is certainly the case. His very name immediately brings you to a golden time for heavyweights, and this tough Canadian, he fought them all, Ali, Frazier, Foreman, forever establishing his honor and his character in the ring. In 20 years in the ring, George Chevallo never hit the canvas. But as Chris Conley shows us, for Outside the Lines, the punishment Chevallo has absorbed outside the ring is beyond any measure of cruel. In the darkness of his bedroom at night, agonizing memories flood the mind of 70-year-old George Shavala. So he tries to keep the darkness at bay. It's pretty hard for me to turn all the lights off, pretty hard. Because I turned all the lights off in my life, like turning off life itself in a way. the bright lights of fight night in the 60s and 70s, there was never any doubt about the courage of George Shavala. For more than two decades, he reigned as the heavyweight champion of Canada. He notched 64 career knockouts. a smart, strategic fighter with a hard head that even in defeat survived the blows of sluggers like Joe Frazier and George Foreman. Getting hit by George Foreman is kind of like getting hit with a big, uh, the big Cadillac car going at 50 miles an hour. Boom. And getting hit by Joe Frazier is like getting hit with a small car like a Pontiac at 100 miles an hour. There's a different feel to it. Big and tough don't describe him. He was a good fighter. George like I tell you today, if I had George here today, world champion, mortal sin, take care of all the guys. Angelo Dundee should know. He was in Muhammad Ali's corner when the greatest took on Shabalo at Maple Leaf Gardens in 1965. That fight went a grueling 15 rounds. Ali won by unanimous decision. But as always, George Chevallo's toughness won the champ's respect. Who's the best heavyweight you've ever fought? Well, the toughest, and the toughest puncher taker, Chevallo. He went to the hospital after the fight with bleeding kidneys, and me, I want to dance with my wife. So I always say, loser goes to the hospital. So that way, I think I won the fight, you know? <laughs> In all, he fought more than 90 times. No opponent ever knocked him down. It took the fate of his loved ones to bring George Chavallo to his knees. George and his wife Lynn had five children. The youngest of their four boys was Jesse Chavallo. When Jesse was 19, a motorcycle accident ripped his kneecap off. The ensuing pain was too intense for him to bear. They went to a party one night, and uh, he complained about his leg, and in particular, someone had said uh, he had something for my son's pain. That was my son's introduction to heroin. Nine months of heroin addiction would drive Jesse to the point of no return. On February 18, 1985, his family returned home to find Jesse lifeless in his bedroom, a shotgun at his side. He had shot himself through the mouth. Went to the hospital, I was there with my wife, and the doctor came out and he just, he just he's gone. Uh, and when you lose a child, it's the worst thing that ever happened. You know, just never forget it. Jesse's suicide sent a shockwave through the Chevallo family. My wife would always say, after the loss of our first son, I won't be able to, if we lose another one, I won't be here. Their daughter, Vanessa, immediately saw the toll it took on her mother. She'd have a few drinks and she'd say, I'm not losing another kid. I can't handle it if I lose another kid. And I know I'm going to lose another kid. 
for two more, Shavalo's sons had become heroin addicts, Georgie Lee and Stephen. I believe that, unfortunately, Jesse introduced my other brothers to it. Night after night, George, one of Canada's most famous men, would search for them in the back alleys and abandoned tenements of Toronto, where they'd score and shoot up. My sons would be so excited about the thought of using. They'd be so excited that when the dealer would pull out the, the heroin in his hand, and when they would look at the heroin, within the flash of one second, one single second, both my sons would defecate in their drawers, they would defecate in their pants. Both were stealing to support their habits and would do time in prison. In 1992, George shot video of Georgie Lee being confronted by Vanessa, desperate to somehow connect to the older brother she loved. Swear, swear on Jesse's life, there's not shooting up in Jackie. She caught you. You caught me shooting up in Jackie. I saw you. I didn't see a needle in your, your, in here, but I assumed there was something tight around your arm, and you were like. Oh, uh. Less than two years after this video was shot, Georgie Lee Shavalo died of a heroin overdose on October 31st, 1993. They found Georgie at a hotel with a syringe in his arm. It was very sad. After all, he was my favorite brother. It was a very sad time. Two days after Georgie Lee's funeral, George saw his wife lying on Jesse's bed. I saw her, her hands cradling the cremated remains of our son Jesse and a suicide note. What did the note say? It was on a list of groceries. That's the only piece of paper she could find. And it hurts me. It hurts me to say it. I looked for love, and I couldn't find any. George emerged from his grief by talking to Stephen about someday taking their story and an anti-drug message to Canada's students. But Stephen continued to struggle with his own addiction. On his 35th birthday, Stephen would be in prison for drug-related thefts. Still, in this 1995 interview, he spoke of his determination to conquer his addiction. My father's never given up hope on me. When he says to me, you know, you know, kid, I need you to be well. I need you to be okay, so I'll be okay. And he's saying that with, with conviction, and he's, he's almost in tears when he says things like that. They, they hit home to me now. And I, I think to myself, man, I've got to be better. I've got to be well for him and the rest of my family. On August 5, 1996, he was released from prison. Twelve days later, Stephen Shavalo was found dead of a heroin overdose, the third Shavalo son to suffer a drug-related death. The horrible thing is that I couldn't stop it. I couldn't stop their pain. I couldn't stop their addiction. Once you're an addict, you are always an addict. One month after Stephen's death, following through on the plan they'd once made together, George began coming to high school auditoriums like this one across Canada, alone, to talk about drugs and his family. I wish my sons could be here, my sons who aren't here on earth, just for 20 seconds. Collectively, they will tell you that doing drugs is insane. They will tell you that doing drugs is like hating yourself honest to god it's like hating yourself and you don't want to hate yourself you want to love yourselves you want to love yourselves in the 12 years since he began george estimates that he has given this talk and relived the deaths of his wife and sons more than a thousand times my son died the same day by the way as river phoenix dying in front of viper's nightclub in, in uh in hollywood on a sunny afternoon, and my son dying 
at a grungy hotel in Toronto. 12 o'clock noon, when they found his body. This man knows how important that talk can be. He's a coach at an elite Toronto public school where he's won Teacher of the Year honors for his work with teens. He is Mitch Shavala, Georgia's only surviving son. I couldn't live, relive those memories over and over and over and over and over and over again constantly. But he has a special way of creating an image in a young person's mind as perhaps when the time comes for them to make the right or wrong decision, that will be a bit of a, a beacon. I like to think that when you leave this audience, all you beautiful young people, if you are ever tempted with the idea of doing drugs, or if you ever even flirt with the idea of doing drugs, I hope you think of me, George Chavallo, and what drugs did to my family. Thank you very much for having me with you this morning. Thank you. He couldn't really help his own kids, and I think that's why he speaks today. And I know he's helped kids. I know his speeches have helped children. I tell you, my dad never gave up hope, ever. Never gave up hope. Ever. Ever. And my dad never does give up hope. In the darkness of his bedroom, George Chavallo is keeping a light on. And in that dark night, when the pain of the past enters his mind yet again, there is a place he can go to feel some relief. This closet, where the cremated remains of Jesse, Georgie Lee, and Stephen Shavalo still rest. Every once in a while, I talk to the closet. Inside is open the door and I talk to them. Every once in a while. What do you say? Just as if they were alive. I hope you're okay. Have a good night. And I love you. You know, I love you. I love you. Chris Connolly for Outside the Lines. George Chavallo, according to Vanessa and Mitch, is a loving, doting grandfather to his six grandkids. And he continues to tell the story of his family's tragedy. If I didn't keep talking, he says, if I didn't keep talking, it would be like my sons died in vain.